Hello friends. This is one of the things that we really love about the Arizona desert. The sunsets. And this evening's is as spectacular as ever. Randy's painting his trailer today and I finally figured out why everybody says he's got a nice looking pickle. Hey, good job, Randy. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. And what we have here is a two horsepower hair dryer off the generator. Lift this up, get it as close to this as you can. Oh. Are those baked potatoes or sweet potatoes These in the foil? Baked. How many turkeys is that, Randy? Thirteen. Thirteen turkeys? Thirteen turkeys, Jerry. Hello, Ace. Well, this is Thanksgiving dinner at Van Build, and we're all participating in the great American tradition of gluttony. I'm walking through the crowd here, see a few famous faces. There's Camper Van Kevin. Wandering Jimmy. There's Miss Lynn. We have uh, 13 turkeys cooked underground, and uh, I think four of them were cooked in oil, however, they do that. A ton of baked potatoes, sweet potatoes, smashed potatoes, dressing, several hundred people here. And it appears that there will be plenty of food for everyone. Uh, this is the line for traditional Thanksgiving dinner. And over there is a vegan line that's even shorter. I think I might have some salad first today. But what I really wanted to do today is to tell you a couple of turkey stories from my past. So here goes. Is number 126. Well, I should have just kept my mouth shut about this, but the other day when we were in the chicken coop collecting eggs, I made some comment about telling the story of stealing a turkey near Thanksgiving time when I was in college. And you do dumb things when you're in college sometimes. But anyway, since I mentioned it and now I've got people asking me about it, <laughs> I am going to go ahead and tell the story. There were four of us, two Iowa farm boys, me who grew up in uh, the ranching country in South Dakota, and this kid from Skokie, Illinois. Uh, Skokie is a suburb of Chicago. It used to be called the largest little village in the world or something like that. I don't know what that meant. Anyway, this kid from uh, Chicago, um, he was definitely a city boy. So the four of us took off to uh, one of the Iowa farm boys' father had a cabin down by the river, and we proceeded to go down there for the weekend about a month before Thanksgiving and uh, got extraordinarily drunk. You make some bad decisions when you're in college, and another bad decision we made was that uh, we decided around midnight that we would go and steal a turkey. Well, we took off, and um, this was kind of a college prank thing at the time. I'm talking about 50 years ago now, so I'm pretty sure that the statute of limitations has run out. Uh, we snuck through a cornfield, the four of us, and of course the kid from Chicago, he was really nervous because we told him, who thought that probably turkeys were born in plastic bags at Safeway, we told him that turkeys are really, really dangerous because they go for your private parts, and you know they're about this high. So he was, 
he was real nervous about this. Anyway, we're sneaking through this cornfield and through and over the turkey fence into this place that has row upon row upon row of long turkey roost buildings. And the turkeys are all sleeping. So there's, we go into a building and there's a row of turkeys on a roost here and a row of turkeys on a roost here and then two rows of roosts on the other side. And in each of these many, many uh, roosts, there are probably uh, maybe a hundred chickens in one building or turkeys, and we grabbed the biggest one we could see, and 10,000 turkeys wake up, and the lights come on in the farmhouse, and we grab this turkey and bail through the fence, and we're running down through the cornfield. I'm holding one side of the turkey's leg, and then another other kid is holding another part of the turkey, and we are taking down a row of corn as we go, there's boom, boom, boom. Farmers used to shoot uh, rock salt. They'd take the pellets out of their 12-gauge shells and put rock salt in it and shoot at you with it. Anyway, we're taking down a row of corn as we're headed towards the car. Boom, boom, boom. The 12-gauge is going off behind us, probably not at us up in the air, just, just to scare us. But we jump in the car. I'm in the back seat, and this turkey is beating the two of us in the back seat it's just beating us to death. And it's a huge turkey. It's the biggest turkey I've ever seen. The neck was like this big around. Anyway, we drive a couple of miles and get the turkey out of the back seat and uh, dispatch the turkey. And we dress it and take it back to this little cabin. And uh, the cabin's cook stove was a wood stove. So we get that all fired up and get a lot of hot coals and stuff in there and we get that turkey in there and proceed to probably pass out. And when we got up in the morning, uh, I remember it as being the best turkey I ever ate. But I was probably still just drunk. That's the story of stealing the turkey. I got another turkey story, and this one has kind of a point to it. Uh, and the point is that uh, as you tell stories your whole life, sometimes they get better and better. And you've heard me say this before about, you know, Mark Twain said, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Well... Uh, I've quite often been accused of, um, you know, my stories getting better and better and better over the years as I continue to retell them. So, I'm telling this story to uh, 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 somebody, and my family is there. My mother is there, my brother is there, and uh, uh, the story is that I went out with my grandfather and um, we had some wild turkeys that had been established in the area that we lived in South Dakota. And the word around the county was that nobody should shoot the turkeys because they wanted to get them established. Well, there were about maybe 25 or 30 of these wild turkeys that kind of roamed around on different people's ranches out there on the prairie. So Grandpa... Uh, Grandpa was, well, Grandpa was, um, Grandpa didn't always uh, go by the rules. <laughs> and he didn't really uh, care much about what other people said he ought to do. Anyway, Grandpa gets me in the car with my 410 shotgun, and we go out there to the ranch, and I'm supposed to shoot one turkey. Well, Single shot, 410. Killed five of them, hit them in the head. And Grandpa and I spend the whole afternoon hiding in the garage, plucking turkeys. Now I'm telling this story to someone, and my mother is sitting there, and my brother is sitting there. 
And this would have been something that happened when I was a teenager. And I'm telling this story. This is a couple of years ago I'm telling the story. And my mother says, Jerry, that wasn't you. That was, that was your brother. And my brother says, you know, I thought that was me when you're telling the story. I've been telling the story for all these years, and I actually had myself convinced that it was me. Now, I guess I don't have any more to say about that, except if you're telling a story for 30 or 40 years, be real careful you don't tell it in front of your mother, because you're going to get corrected. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.